Another good day for you ABM Business Math Learners! Again, I am Ma'am Yang and welcome to my class. In this video lesson, taxable and untaxable benefits will be discussed. Get ready! The most essential learning competencies in this video lesson is You learners can define each of the benefits given to each earners and distinguish taxable from non-taxable benefits. Let us define first what benefit is. Benefit is a payment or gift made by an employer, the state, or an insurance company. Taxes are the amount of money that the government requires people to pay according to their income and the value of the property for the support of the government. Taxable benefits are extra advantage that employees receive in addition to their wage, whose value is included when calculating their tax. While non-taxable benefits are benefits that are not taxed or only partially taxed. De minimis, these are the benefits of relatively small values provided by the employers to the employee on top of the basic compensation intended for the general welfare of the employees. Being of relatively small values, the same is not being considered as a taxable compensation. Next is a list of possible benefits of a wage earner. Take note, however, that not all benefits are obligatory. An example of this is when Company X gives hazard pay while Company Y does not. This is only possible if Company X is mining company and Company Y owns a department store. The Presidential Decree 442, also known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, provide a list of benefits for wage earners and these are the following. First, we have a minimum wage. A minimum wage was set per region, province, and industry sector. This may vary depending on the number of employees and gross sales of an enterprise and its industry sector. It is exempted from tax. Second, we have overtime pay. An overtime pay is an additional compensation given to an employee who renders service beyond the maximum number of working hours per day. So, in the Philippines, we only have 8 working hours per day. The additional compensation is equivalent to at least 125% of the employee's hourly rate. Third is premium pay. A premium pay is an additional compensation if an employee worked within 8 hours during non-working hours such as rest day and special holidays. If an employee did not render work or not required to work at this day, then he is entitled to a compensation. Fourth, holiday pay. Based on the labor code, all employees shall be paid with their daily basic wage for regular holidays, whether they work on that day or not. Fifth is night shift differential. So an employee who works between 10 p.m. and 6 p.m. will receive an additional 10% premium and that is called night shift differential. Sixth, we have a 13th month pay. 30th month pay is a monetary bonus which is mandated by the law that is given either in two installments. It could be paid in May or in December or in full before December 24. Generally, 30th month pay is 1 over 12 of the employee's annual income or equivalent to one month basic pay. Seventh is a service charge. It is the amount collected by some restaurants, hotels, nightclubs, and the like. For employees collecting service charges are entitled to an equal share in the 85% of the total charges, while the remaining 15% of the charges may be retained to the management. Eighth is the service incentive lives. 
An employee who has rendered at least one year of service is entitled to SIL or Service Incentive Leave for five days with pay which can be used for sick and vacation leave purposes. At the end of the year, unused SIL can be converted into cash based on a salary rate. Ninth, we have parental leaves. And parental leaves have three kinds. This are maternity leave, paternity leave, and the solo parent leave. Maternity leave, according to the expanded maternity leave or EML bill, the law grant each pregnant employee 105 days of maternity leave credits. It also allows new mothers to extend this leave for additional 30 days. But this will be an unpaid leave. Next is paternity leave. Paternity leave grants 7 days of fully paid leave to married fathers that is effective up to the first 4 deliveries of legitimate spouse. Under EMI, Seven days of a woman's paid maternity leave credits can be transferred to fathers, extending the allowed seven-day paternity to be extended to 14 days. Next, we have solo parent leave. Seven days leave with pay are given to solo or single mothers and father for every your service aside from their other leave privileges like maternity or paternity solo mother can extend their leave for 15 days and these are paid leaves 10th is a separation pay a regular employee who is validly dismissed or terminated from a company is entitled to a separation pay except those who are terminated due to misconduct or crime involvement. 11. Is Retirement Pay Upon reaching the retirement age, an employee is entitled to a retirement pay equivalent to at least half month salary every year or service. A fraction of six months is considered as one whole year. An employee may retire upon reaching the age of 60 or more voluntary retirement age, provided that he served for at least 5 years in the same company. Twelfth is the de minimis benefits. So, these benefits are given to employees other than regular wages. These are relatively small in value and are not taxable. The following are the de minimis benefits not subject to withholding tax. Letter A, we have monetized and used vacation leave credits to employees not exceeding 10 days during the year. Letter B, monetized the value of vacation and sick leave credits paid to government officials and employees. Letter C, Medical cash allowance to dependents of employees not exceeding 1,500 per employee per semester or 250 pesos per month. Letter D, rice subsidy of 2,000 pesos or one sack of 50 kilogram rice per month amounting to not more than 2,000 pesos. Letter E, uniform and clothing allowance not exceeding 6,000 per annum. Letter F, actual medical assistance. For the sake of example, medical allowance to cover medical and healthcare needs, annual medical or executive checkup, maternity assistance, and written consultations not exceeding 10,000 pesos per annum. Letter G, laundry allowance not exceeding 300 pesos per month. Letter H, employees achievement awards. For the sake of example, for length of service or safety achievement, which in the form of a tangible personal property other than cash or gift certificate, with an annual monetary value not exceeding 10,000 pesos received by the employee under an established written plan which does not discriminate in favor of highly paid employees. Letter I Gifts given during Christmas and major anniversary celebrations not exceeding 5,000 pesos per employee per annum. Letter J 
daily meal allowance for overtime work not exceeding 25% of the basic minimum wage. Letter K. Benefits received by an employee by virtue of a collective bargaining agreement or CBA and productivity incentive schemes provided that the total annual monetary value received from both CBA and productivity incentive schemes combined do not exceed 10,000 pesos per employee per taxable year. We have here a summarized tax rules. For salaries and wages or for the compensation of an employees, except for the wage earners of course, that is taxable. The de minimis benefits which we have enumerated earlier, that is also non-taxable. In excess of the de minimis plus 13th month pay and bonuses, maximum of 90,000, that is, is still non-taxable but if in case your benefits and bonuses exceeded from 90,000 well that is already taxable and and other benefits which isn't mentioned as a de minimis benefits will also be taxable for example mr masipa received the following compensation and benefits during the entire year Annual salary is 360,000 pesos. Third month pay and bonuses, 90,000 pesos. Rice subsidy, 30,000 pesos. Laundry allowance, 3,600 pesos. Clothing allowance is 10,000 pesos. So, to know the total taxable amount of Mr. Masipag, we will create this table. Computation of taxable income and taxable and untaxable benefits. We have here the description and the taxable and the non-taxable column. The non-taxable column is divided into two from the de minimis benefits and other benefits and exists. Okay, so these are this column describes the compensation and allowances of Mr. Masipa. So we have here the annual salary. Annual salary will be placed under the taxable column. Okay, there he is. Since we learned a while ago that compensation is taxable. Next is the 13th month pay and bonuses. So this will be placed under the non-taxable column okay but it will be placed in other benefits and exist columns since this where these are not mentioned as the minimis benefits okay so this uh, this include this 30th month pay and bonuses include in the other benefits and exist Next, we have rice subsidy. Rice subsidy, as we learned earlier, is one of the de minimis benefits, but it is up to 2,000 pesos monthly or 24,000 yearly. So, we will put the 24,000 under the de minimis benefits and the excess, which is amounting to 6,000, will be in the excess column. Okay, next we have clothing allowance. Clothing allowance is just up to 6,000 per annum or yearly since it exceeded. Okay, so 6,000 only and then it has an excess of 4,000. So, so we place the 4,000 in the column of other benefits. And we also have here laundry allowance okay laundry allowance is 300 pesos monthly or 3600 per annum or per year therefore it falls under the de minimis benefits okay now we have to add all the other benefits and excess 90,000 plus 6,000 is 96,000 plus 4,000 is 100 since 
other benefits and exist exceeded to 90,000 the excess amount will already be taxable so the total amount the total taxable amount of Mr. Masipag will be 370 because his annual salary 360 is already taxable and the in excess of 90,000 from other benefits in excess is 10,000 pesos so to add this up we will have a total taxable amount 370,000 pesos so the computation of tax will be uh, will be discussed in our next video lesson. Thank you so much and see you in our next video lesson.